Hi, have you heard about Bitcoin? Not Bitcoin, but Bipcoin. Bravo, India, Papa, Coin. Bipcoin is a new cryptocurrency that you can start mining today for free on ordinary computers. Unlike most altcoins, Bipcoin is not a clone of Bitcoin. Bipcoin is based on entirely new, more recent, and better code called CryptoNote. So unlike Bitcoin, Bipcoin has truly untraceable transactions, does not require specialized mining rigs, and has adaptive limits. Plus, Bipcoin is the only cryptocurrency covered by the Bipcot no government license. This allows use and reuse by anyone except governments and government agents. If you're still kicking yourself in the head for not getting in on the ground floor of Bitcoin, start mining, using, and trading Bipcoin today. Not a guarantee. Mining Bipcoin costs you nothing but the electricity to run your computer. And we already take Bipcoin for stickers and buttons. Go to Bipcoin.org. That's Bipcoin.org. Once again, that's Bravo India Papa Coin.org. The Lullbirds, that's our word, brought to you by Bipcot and Discord. I said Fiendphone again. Um, here with Jim Babb, um, the recently unelected treasurer of... <laughs> no, not elected. Uh, treasurer of uh, Philadelphia. And then our new Lulbert co-host, uh, was it Heisen... He I can't say that word on my show. That's a terrible word, right? <laughs> Heisenberger. You can pick any variation of it. Okay. Yeah. Heisen that one, that one works too. Yeah. So how are you guys doing today? Awesome. All right. Breaking Good. back on the low birds. And then we have yeah. one announcement. Um, we have an app now. We have an uh, Android app called Not a Guarantee. Uh, it's really, um, well, it's 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 psychedelic, to, <laughs> but it's, it's a really <laughs> weird app. All it does is it plays like a couple of sound files. One is me saying Not a Guarantee. Uh, Michael Dean saying allegedly, and then Angela Keaton laughing, and then <laughs> but it's secretly mining Bitcoin on your on your phone when you're Bip. when you're not using it, right? Right, <laughs> Bitcoin, not Bitcoin. And then <laughs> the other one, uh, the other thing it does, it plays the uh, it's a podcast player, it just plays our, our show, and then there's like a letter of recommendation from Michael W. Dean. So yeah, yeah, nice. um, which we'll get into in a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Michael Dean just a bit because there's the kind of interesting developments with you two. Um, Your but, co hosts have been unrecommended by Michael Dean. <laughs> yeah. Should we just get right into Dear Babby? Because that was one of the questions. <laughs> oh, was yeah. it? All right. Let's, let's do it. Oh, wait All a right. minute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think you would know. Let me see. Uh, where did it go? Oh, I had it loaded up. Here we go. So this one is from. Recently sacked in Syracuse. Dear Babby, is it true that there's still a life after the fiends asking for a friend? <laughs> Ooh, good question. I've said before, that which is fiend cannot be unfiend. Mm -hmm. So the essence of being a fiend, I believe, is inherent and indefeasible. So even if your Bipcot license has been revoked, uh, you you're still have that fiend essence. And... You know, Hillary's pantsuit still stinks. <laughs> this is true. Well, that's that's good to know. Yeah. So and Trump's hair you're, still you're, smells you're like still a, you're still a fiend, even if you're uh, you've been dewormed. <laughs> well, that uh, that, that deworm that uh, that that makes me it makes me feel better. I'll let my friend know. Uh, <laughs> oh, like you, you outed know. yourself. <laughs> yeah. Well, come on, that's just a little too obvious. <laughs> yeah. If you want to ask. Babby questions and ask it in dear, uh, dear Babby. There's also, there's a contact form on the Lawbirds page. Just go there and you'll find it. If you can't find it, you're probably too dumb to ask a question anyway. So the next question is, uh, dear Babby, this is, comes from D Food in Philly. Dear Babby, when is it okay to support the state, or when is it okay to support the state to protect our liberty? Support the state to protect our liberty. Dear Babby, when that, is it okay to support like the a... state to protect our liberty? I'm I'm trying to imagine any situation, but let's let's take it apart. Okay, so support the state, right? If you're so, if a thief said uh, your money or your life, is it is it okay to support the thief with your wallet rather than die? <laughs> eh, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hold it against you for for choosing not to be uh, murdered. Uh, but when you think about it, though, the state is really an idea. Okay, so. 
the question is really, do you support this idea that we call the state and the idea that we need these sort of violent thugs to go around bossing everybody around on behalf of uh, some, you know, elite ruling class? So should we support that idea? I, I can't imagine any situation where that idea um, would be supported to protect our liberty. That's uh, that's. So why don't you want to make like America great again? Why don't you want to make America great again? <laughs> <laughs> why don't you want to do what? Why don't you want to make America great again? <laughs> uh. Why do you hate America? <laughs> All right. So the next question is, what is a babby? Um, how is Babby <laughs> formed by fright, um, fright back in Brooklyn? How Fr is Babby Fr formed? Fr back, how is Babby formed? Magnificently. Magnificent. <laughs> Here we go. I don't think he chose a name. Oh, eh, sort of docks it a little bit by giving, <laughs> <laughs> giving out his gender. I gendered him. Oh, oh. send in hate mail at jimjesus.com <laughs> or anyways um if a brutalist has one paperclip one pistol and one bullet and an agent of the state takes the paperclip paper paperclip how long should the brutalist wait before shooting the agent of the state signed uh going po no curious about brutalist with a red dawn fetish okay let me see if i get this right so this brutalist has a paperclip a pistol and a bullet Mm -hmm. And an agent of the state takes his paperclip, and how? So, how long should you wait after this happens to shoot the agent of the state? Yes. Okay. Well, that has got to be a trick question. First of all, the brutalist would have already shot the mailman long before he got anywhere near the paperclip hoard. Okay. Only a cuck would, would let would let him get near his paperclips. Okay. I don't care if it's a crossing guard, whoever. They're going to get it. Okay. okay. So. Does that answer the question? I think, well, I guess it really was. It was a bad question. It didn't need to be answered. I think that's what we determined. All right. So the next one is. Um, oh, I'm not so, saying I support that point of view. I'm. I'm not a brutalist. But, uh, of course. Uh, but yeah, since the question is, what what would a brutalist do? That's how I would answer. Yeah. yeah. The brutalist would have already destroyed the state by by killing all the cops, right? <laughs> right. And, unless he needed to have his website running to tell other people to shoot the state, right? Because you know. Um, so, <laughs> so this one's one from the bank. This is one that I had a while ago. We just never got around to doing a dear Babby since then. Uh, so why is the East coast so weird? Signed Jack, Jack it at Jack fest. Ooh, now this was over by the Kokesh trailer. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that while I'm drinking coffee. You're going to get me killed, man. Um, yeah, Jackalope Freedom Fest was pretty fun, wasn't it? But yeah. I, I really don't think it should be called Jack Fest. I, I, I just, I don't know why, you know, sure. Kokesh was there, but still, <laughs> <laughs> he, he didn't show up until the last few days and then he left for a little bit and came back. Uh, so, but anyway, why is the East coast weird? Um, because well, I, the, what they were saying was just basically where most people in North America live. So right. everybody's here. So we get tons of everything, including weird people. Yeah. So uh, I guess it was like in Jersey, reference. They sort of like coagulate in Jersey. It like kind of draws them in as like this uh, sort of a lowest point where where the scum uh, drains to. So I don't know. If that's not really an answer, but that's my theory. OK, it was in reference to like, I guess, last time you were on, you said that you asked me why the West Coast was so weird. And I think one of the West the, Coast. The West there. is is pretty darn weird. You got to yeah. admit it. For some reason, I just can't get my audio levels right. Sorry about this. I don't know what's going on here, but my my soundboard is acting strange. Ha! Huh. I do not want to have to go to Skype. Anyways, um, so we have more. So how do we stop white genocide? Signed alt right in Atlanta. <laughs> I I think. Uh, gee, that's a tough one. I I think by teaming up with the Bronies. <laughs> <laughs> and and fighting just fighting to the bitter end. I don't know. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> Dear Babby, I, I, I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I, I, uh, 
I think that's a spectacular idea. I, I think I want to actually start promoting that and see if it catches on because that would be uh, that'd be quite a sight. Someone needs to, well, the, to have the, a poll the to see how many of has room for a lot of different types of alt right people, right? From from fascists to to self described anarchists to uh, just people that xenophobes, you know. Why well, not the bronies too? <laughs> Let's yeah. bring them in. <laughs> yeah, they don't let many of the other animals in. I think they have like one little dragon that pops in every once in a while, but that's about it. I mean, it seems like a pretty hegemonic society <laughs> over there. <laughs> and and basically, he's slave labor. That little dragon or whatever, it's slave labor. So, anyways, um, the next question is, dear Babby, who is the Dread Pirate Roberts? Signed, not a Fed in Quentin, Qu- Qu- Quantico, Virginia. <laughs> Not well, I've already been outed on Facebook. They caught me wearing that T-shirt that says "I am Dread Pirate." Roberts. Okay, so <laughs> there's really nothing to keep a secret anymore there. So everybody knows, sure. Yeah, and then of course my I guess that's the last question on this. Uh, yeah, there was none on Twitter. So the, I guess my question would be: So uh, how does how was your running for office in uh, Philly there? I, I'm pretty sure it was a giant waste of time. Um, <laughs> Did you actually do anything? Or? <laughs> well, I, I, I was the can- libertarian candidate for treasurer in Pennsylvania. And I didn't well, I know have that. to. Uh, Gary Johnson and Bill Weld basically paid for the ballot access and with the LNC. Mm-hmm. So the rest of the statewide candidates kind of got like um, uh, kind of got a free ride on that. So uh, thanks, Bill Weld. Uh, but. I thought it would be fun. It was kind of an experiment to see if I could get in a debate next to like real serious treasurer candidates, like honest, actual stage. I think and you were the most I, honest. It almost one. happened, but uh, it did not come together. So yeah, but uh, you were the, the most yeah, honest kind of one disappointment, running. But I think if I had accomplished that, a debate with the with some establishment people that take being a treasurer seriously, I think it would have been totally worth the all the confusion that it caused. Hmm. Hmm. But but you were the really the honest one running out of all of them because you were the one saying that you know it's probably not a good idea to steal people's money to begin with so why don't we just lock the treasury up change all the password and the keys to the doors right yeah I mean basically that was my platform was hey let's uh, let's let's just shut it all down give all the money back to the people they stole it from and and uh, and just stop doing that mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's, it's controversial but uh, <laughs> but it's pretty. <laughs> but, what what else could you do, right? What, but uh, well, what, you could guard the treasure. Guard the treasure. Well, he's a treasurer. That's what they do. They guard the treasure. <laughs> well, I I led my inter the interviews that I did. I'd led with the with taxation is theft, and the treasurer's job is to guard the 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 treasure. But this time it's a pirate's treasure. Yeah, and it's been looted. It has to go back. So. Uh, who I would, didn't really get a whole lot of traction with that. <laughs> <laughs> Who'd have thought? But you'd, you'd be surprised, though. Um, but it really was kind of confusing people because, uh, you know, I'm a vote for nobody person. I don't vote. I don't believe in voting. And it's it really sends a mixed message when you're running for office. <laughs> <laughs> well, were and you trying asking? to denounce voting. I have some understandable confusion there. <laughs> Were you, were you actively campaigning for people not to vote for you? Because I do know people who have done that. They've run. And then... Well, I my candidate photo was of me holding the sign that says "Vote for oh. Nobody: Leadership We Can Trust." <laughs> and that's 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 great. And I, and I I had a section on my uh, Facebook. I made a special Facebook page for fictional character James Babb, and it, and one of the things I put on there it said, "Why should you vote for me?" And I said, I said. You probably shouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, let's just say this is confusing at best, but um, still kind of fun. And like, I think the best uh, endorsement I got was from somebody who had who had uh, placed an absentee ballot for me. She voted for me, and then she read some of my, my positions and then she contacted me she goes I'm sorry I voted for you <laughs> <laughs> so so you know there's a few there were definitely a few people reached but I 
it really is. I'm afraid I just confused more people than <laughs> than 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 I uh, educated. So, but, but, what, do you, you, what did, do you guys think? Giant did, did, giant waste of time or potentially worth the the lulls? Well, if you don't have to put that much effort into it, I, I, I'm sure it had to be worth some fun. You know, there were you get several your... forms to fill out. Oh, um, well, like a lot of questionnaires. <laughs> I answered. I did fill out questionnaires about stuff, and and I, and I only got a couple interviews out of it. But it was still a couple interviews, and I, I like doing mainstream media interviews, even if it's like a small paper or, or so, you know, just try to get outside of our echo chamber. Yeah, I think that's kind sure. of important to get out. That that's the only reason why I'm even involved at all with the LP here in Nevada. Like, and it's really kind of one foot in the door and mostly out. It's just, it's just, you know, using the electoral system to kind of fund itself against itself. I think that's kind of valuable, but that's about it. I don't, I don't, if I really thought that I could win the presidency of the United States or even, you know, mayor, I don't know what I'm going to run for quite yet for. If I thought I could win, I wouldn't, <laughs> you know, city council, oh, yeah. maybe, or eh, maybe mayor, I, I would not be able to do anything. That'd probably be the one I would take. Uh, and, you know, probably return the check. Now I deserve it. <laughs> because I don't have to deal with all that crap and cutting ribbons. I deserve it. But, you know, if it was for city council or president, I, I wouldn't run. So so would the, would, would the goal be to, to, to win or to just use the platform to call out all the shenanigans? Use the platform to call out the shenanigans. But if I do win, if mayor, which I don't know, because the LP is talking about actually running someone serious for mayor, quote unquote serious. Um, but, uh, if, if they don't, I'm going to run as a joke. And if I do get elected as a joke, which is possible, you know, this is Vegas and the, 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 the current mayor's husband, uh, was like a joke candidate for the most part. Like he used to just come out with a, with a, with a martini and a couple of showgirls under his arm. That was his whole shtick. But listen, these days you got to be careful. Joke candidates can win. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. See Trump. They <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they memed a president no, but, into the White House. So so yeah, let's have them all announce that you can't win and that's when you should be scared. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, yeah, as as long as you're doing it to have fun, I don't see the harm in it. Yeah, yeah we we should uh we should <laughs> I think you should run for dog catcher. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be kind of anti- well. See that that would also send out a very confusing message because <laughs> my, my my whole business model was built upon you know not using cages and ha- giving the dogs room to roam, <laughs> letting them all go. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that should giving, be your camp- giving them some freedom. But that, <laughs> that should be great. Your- yeah, like just you know <laughs> liberate the dogs. <laughs> Open the gates. Yeah, yeah actually, you know what? Now that, that might not be a bad idea. <laughs> I, I here's a great comment I I just found on my uh, quote unquote campaign Facebook page. I made this statement about you know giving all the money back because it's you know taxation is theft, etc. And the person says, "Hey, if you refund taxes, where the f are you gonna get? Or where where the f is the you state cuss gonna on get sh- its money?" You can cuss on this. I mean, know, yeah. I appreciate the sentiment, sentiment, but what the f is this going to accomplish except increasing our debt? Yeah, you, you know you can cuss on the show, right? <laughs> you can cuss. This is not, can, we're on okay. radio. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, I, so my I try not was, to do it a lot. Look, but. I said, anyone who feels that state employees need their money will always be free to send it. If theft is an allowable funding source for these people, then we at least need to realize that they don't have any limits and that the Pennsylvania Constitution is a lie. Okay. Now this person seems to be enraged. Okay. <laughs> James Babb, you can't run a government off charitable donations, you dumb fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Mission accomplished, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> yes, exactly. Maybe but they... remember the whole premise. Is my my leading talking point is taxation is theft. Right, and this guy finally got it, but he had to tell me <laughs> off to do it. So <laughs> I, I accept. Happy to play that role. <laughs> so yeah, are you gonna are you gonna run again, or or is this gonna completely destroy your your uh, political? This being on this show, is that gonna destroy your your uh, political future? Uh, you know, this could only enhance my my reputation and my image but uh 
Yeah, I, I, I'm kind of leaning towards it's not really worth the time, but I wouldn't completely rule it out. And I think that other people in certain circumstances, you can get a stage. And if you can do something important with that stage, why not do it? Yeah. But there is a downside of confusing people. A lot of people are like, yeah, may, you know, you know, really get on, you know, like, yeah, I get I got hundreds of uh, not hundreds, but literally scores of people like Facebooking me telling me that they voted for me and, you know, yay, I voted for you. I'm like, each one, I'm like, oh, no, didn't get it, didn't get it, <laughs> <laughs> didn't get it. And it's, it, but it's nice and it, people mean well, but it's, um, I, I thought it must be kind of like being a Jehovah's Witness on your birthday when everybody's like, happy birthday. <laughs> if there's a it's candidate nice, who but... tells me not to vote for him on the libertarian ticket or even the Republican ticket as a libertarian, I'd vote for him. I'd just, I'd just like, why not? Might as well. Just, just to kind of... <laughs> Just to kind of just <laughs> just to spread some a little bit of confusion, like someone actually voted for the guys who said don't vote for him, that, <laughs> like and, and especially if he gets a lot of votes, then the media is going to have to like talk about that. Like, okay, so the guy who came in second place told everyone not to vote for him. What is wrong with our system? <laughs> I got, got one hundred thirty-one thousand votes. That's how wow. Much. How much? I was going to ask that before. That's pretty good. That's. That's that's a lot of votes. Yeah. Well, not really. First of oh. all, I got I got beaten by Gary Johnson, okay, who got slightly more than I did uh, in Pennsylvania, and I got beaten by the Green Girl. There's a girl from the Green Party, and she beat me. Um, was she so. was she all about like looting more treasure? Was that her say that plat- again? Was her was her yeah, plat was- yeah was her platform to get more treasure? To put more uh, presumably, treasure. Okay. I, I don't know her or never heard from her or anything about her. So, but she evidently is much more palatable than I am. <laughs> much more votable. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, if she's if she's with the Green Party, I'm sure she tried to run. You know, one of the standard platforms. So you know, more boiler green people, people. We have Green Party people here in Pennsylvania, and they're they're everyone I've met has always been extremely nice and. Honestly, they can be more libertarian than half the people in the libertarian party sometimes. Yeah. So, um, oh no, I, I I didn't mean that, but I just but don't they usually at least take? I mean, they take it a little more seriously the the elections. I don't know. At least the ones they? around the, the, the ones around here they do at least the ones I the ones I dealt. Well, with I don't know. Jilly Biafra did run. Jilly Biafra did run for mayor, and he did ran ran for president. And all of his platforms was like, we're going to ban cars from the city limits, and we're going to make businessmen wear clown suits. So it really depends. It really yeah, it's depends. basically like a Hugo like a... Chavez, but they're nice <laughs> about it. Yeah, <laughs> they're they're. They're Hugo Chavez with weed. That's pretty much to describe. It. Oh, and and they're and they're mostly anti-vaxxers and anti-nuclear and anti-GMO and like every every other kind of weird kind Anti-science. of all. Science. Yeah, they're all about homeopathy. Yeah. And I used to be a member of the Green Party back when I was a progressive, and I ended up leaving after reading the platform. I read the platform to the Green Party, and I, even even as a, as as lefty as I was, who used to joke about like if I was any more left, I'd be a socialist. Like th- I thought that was clever. <laughs> yeah, young, dumb, and you know, full they of have the right. key, the the what do they call them? The key green values or the yeah. green key values? You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I don't know if that was it's around. A bunch when of I... nice stuff like decentralization, and uh, I forget That's what funny. they were, but you, you don't necessarily <laughs> have to interpret them the way Chairman Mao would. Uh, there's, yeah. but that's kind of what they are. So. Uh, I went to a fun, they had a, a Green Party booth at this uh, event I went to. It was like a peace rally of different peace organizations. And the Green Party was set up there and they had this pretty elaborate display where they they um, they had all these buckets set up and they handed you a roll of, of, uh, of 50 pennies. And they said, here, how would you like your taxes to be spent? And there's education and transportation and security and 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 these different things and you could you know ch- sort of vote with your with these pennies they gave you so i looked it's like hmm, how would i like my taxes to be spent well i just put it in my pocket and i walked away <laughs> <laughs> that's the correct answer <laughs> i didn't even look back i did that's... i didn't even look back to see what they thought i just like okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> I got 50 cents from the green party yeah i ended up joining the democrats after a while and i kind of got exposed a little bit more because in, in terms of the Green Party, like the Democratic Party is is pretty, you know, a little bit more economically literate. But that's not really saying much, you know. 
And then, you know, I got exposed yeah. to like, uh, what was it? Uh, bullshit, Penn and Teller. And then, you know, that's when I started making a transition. But even still, like, I remember being a progressive and being hard in the paint for all, for all these Green Party candidates. But once I read that platform, I was like, nope, I'm out of here. Gone. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go hang out with the Democrats. At least you know they they're like a little bit more saying like Kucinich who's hor- who was horrible. Like at least wasn't going on stage going like oh, maybe we should ban vaccines and <sighs> all right pass. I, I I never made it to the Green Party, but I I did hang out with the Democrats for way too long. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I because I, I just would, I barely paid attention, so I, I really was like you know yeah first I was, time I ever heard. Ever heard Rush Limbaugh use that stupid "useful idiot" phrase? I was like, <laughs> "Wait a minute, that that was me. Yeah. I, I really was." Like, <laughs> yeah, and so long. I actually used to listen to Rush Limbaugh when I was a when I was a liberal, and that kind of helped me a little bit too. And as much as I don't like the guy and I disagree with him on a lot of stuff, uh, he is a stady. What is it? What does Paul Gordon say? Stady von State Face, whatever. Yeah, yeah he is. But. Like when you kind of listen to him, like when you're on the left, you think that guy's literally Hitler and he's a racist and all that stuff. But then when you listen to his show, you're like, oh, okay, I get it, I get it. When you listen to yeah. him for like two weeks, you're like, okay, I, I get what you're doing. You're you're kind of a troll. I mean, he has been an inspiration to OxyContin users. <laughs> 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 yep, that he can function at that level at uh, on that do- with that level of dosage. That's yeah, impressive. that's. That that is impressive. I mean, I, I I never got like you know I didn't use oxy too much, but that that is impressive. That's a you know I'd probably be on the floor somewhere. Do you yeah, think- I think he's using like the dosage they might give, say, like a disobedient kid in sixth grade. <laughs> <laughs> heavy, heavy. So he's probably all hopped up on kratom now. Now he's like, oh, I could I can do this stuff legally now. I'm gonna get some me some kratom. <laughs> I still haven't gotten any of that. I got to get my hands on some. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much just too lazy. I know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. So kratom is like it's the new hip hip smoke shop drug that everybody's trying. It was salvia and then spice, and now it's kratom, which is just like this plant that grows in like Southeast Asia, you know. And basically, it's just kind of like an opioid receptor. Uh, Agri- ag- agitator, whatever aggregate. I don't know. I don't know what the word is, but it basically kind of tricks your brain into thinking that you're taking an opioid when you're really not. And there's like different like ones They have like fast, slow it was fast, slow and medium. And basically like the fast one isn't going to f- make you feel like you're on an Oxycontin. You're going to be like energetic and you want to clean your house. And the slow one's going to be like taking heroin, but like a small dose or something. And then like the medium is kind of like a mix in between. And it's completely legal. And I guess the withdrawal effects are like that of caffeine. And people use it who are addicted to um, to opioids have to, you ever to tried get them it? off. Yeah, I have tried it. I, I ordered some. You can buy some on Bitcoin, by the way. You can use Bitcoin to buy it. I don't know why I have no interest. Uh, it just doesn't seem seem appealing to me. But, yeah, uh, it's I, I, I bought like one thing. And when I ran out, I was like, hmm, maybe later. Huh. I'm okay. <laughs> I mean, yeah, something like weed i've got like decades of bob marley songs to, to fall back on <laughs> to let me know that it's probably okay this new stuff i'm just nah i don't think so well oh, didn't bob marley oh. die from cancer anyway <laughs> not lung cancer yeah it, wasn't lung toe, cancer. it was toe cancer <laughs> i think he died from being a rastafarian and refusing uh, proper medical treatment yeah, that, that was, was one that thing was i heard it. but then he did go to the hospital later i don't i, I don't really know yeah, he, he was refusing it at first, and then it got really bad, and he actually had to go to the doctor, and they were like, oh, it's too late now. This is the 70s. Oh. We don't we – <laughs> chemo sucks now. <laughs> and so he was like, all right, I'll just go to this little retreat where they'll keep me, like, out of pain, and that was it. So – Wasn't there a story about, like, refusing to have his foot amputated? It might have yeah. saved him. I don't know. I think they have, like, a like a rule in Rastafarianism where you're not supposed to cut off parts of your body, and I think that's why they grow their hair out to be super long. Um I think that's true. I mean, I, I do have Rastafarian friends, but I never got around to asking him, like, is there a book I can read about this? <laughs> so I know what the hell you guys are talking about. Because the only thing I hear is, like, you know, telephone stories, like, oh, they, they get stoned to talk to goats. It's like, I don't think that's true either. But, um, <laughs> I mean, they well, around here in, uh, in Pennsylvania and I guess Delaware, there's like Bob Marley's kids are everywhere. Like, everywhere, like everybody, like, I know on Facebook, like, hey, here's a picture with this kid of bob marley they're everywhere so <laughs> I, I, there must be a lot of them but uh and there's a lot of them around this area so i i i don't no one's ever introduced me but we probably go to i've probably been to parties 
<laughs> you probably got high with one and didn't realize it. Like, oh, that- <laughs> I know uh, Ed Fortune, NJ Weedman. He he hangs around with with some of the family members. I don't know. Yeah, well, he he, he looks like some of the family members though. <laughs> cool guy though. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, the kratom. It, it seems kind of interesting that it helps people get off opioids, which is like, this is great. Except for once, once that started getting around, like, oh, you can help people get off opioids. Well, maybe we should look into banning it. And so, like the FDA, or no, it was uh, the DEA originally was going to label it Schedule One, and then they reversed that yep. decision. And so now it's kind of like in this weird legal limbo where they like every time you go to a kratom distributor site, they're always like, "Hey, do you use kratom? Go to this website and write in a comment to the DEA to to beg them to make it legal." <laughs> it's like no, yeah. That, that, then they put like they said they were going to like wait on it for a year or something and then yeah. decide again. Or... So if you order it, there's no know. refunds because. Well, look, I mean, with weed getting legalized, they got to keep those jails filled up somehow. Right. Okay. Well, exactly. So we've got to switch to something else. Uh, wh- who else are they going to put in there? <laughs> like the five Salvia <laughs> users that are still left. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> big money Salvia. Oh, well, we'll, we'll just Bitcoin. do this and, until, until, the next, until the next plant is discovered. And yeah. Then, you know. Yeah. Until then, there's Bitcoin users that they can start filling up with or. Yeah. By the way, I read the story and I, I don't think I can pull it up right now, but it's, Matt Le- Matt DeSauce, one of the other co-hosts, he linked me this article who that was saying that um, I guess the, I guess it's the FTC is looking into uh, regulating uh, Bitcoin users uh, who who transfer money in and out of uh, is it coin? What is what is what is the Coinbase. one that every, Coinbase? Yeah, so that anybody yeah. who buys uh, it off Coinbase, they're going to start uh, taxing them, and the IRS is going to press it. Yeah, it was IRS. It was going to start pressing them for taxes because, like, they found out that a a or one or two users was using it to 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 launder money, and because of that, That's you know, it? everybody, yeah, and because it's basically kind of like, and the analogy he used was like, what it's like saying that like two people use a Chase bank to launder money, so we need to investigate everybody who's ever used a Chase bank. It doesn't make any sense, but yeah, that's that's what they're doing now. So, freedom. Well, I'm not surprised. I I was just looking at uh, Bitcoin ATMs, reading about different types of Bitcoin ATMs around the world. There's, mm-hmm. there's like quite a few of them out there now, and some of them are like taking your picture and scanning yeah. your ID and all this really? stuff. Like, what? <laughs> this wow. is not what I had in mind when I pictured a Bitcoin ATM. Yeah. Like, Yeah, right? It should just have like a little thing where you insert cash and then it says like, okay, scan this. Scan this paper, uh, little paper wallet on the screen and there you go. That's what it originally was. That's what, when I first saw well, one, and that's I, what it kind of was. And some are that way. Yeah. I, think you, I think they can be that way, but everybody's you know, there's that the whole like venture capital people in, in term in Bitcoin, they really they're like, look, we're compliant, we're compliant. Well, yeah. Oh, and they they and they dance and they sit and then they sing and then they're and then they get more money. Oh, look, there's less <laughs> chance of this pe- these people being shut down. Let's put our money into that, and 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 it pays to be that way for yeah. them. Like originally, all they wanted for me was like my cell phone, and that was it. When I when I first used one. And then when I went back, it was like, you have to scan. You have, they had a brand new one and you had to scan your ID and then it had to be approved. And so I did it anyway and I didn't buy anything from it. I was just like, I might as well just have it just in case I just need Bitcoin like quickly because the, the, the prices were too high. And they wanted my ID and I did all that stuff. And then they were like, you were not approved. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, you're not going <laughs> to approve me after I got all my information in there and I entered it right. And they do that to me a lot because... I have a uh, I have a suffix and it's part of my legal name, so I have to put it in my last name, and it just confuses every th- every single thing I, I enter. Like if I p- apply for credit cards, they're always calling me and be like, "We can't get your name right with your social security. Something's wrong here." I'm like, it's "IV after my name, dummy." <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. miserable. Yeah, don't don't name your kids Junior or the fourth or the fifth. Don't do it. It's 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 a hassle. It's a hassle. Don't. And that's do it. part of your legal name. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, I, mom and dad. Yeah. You know. Well, they didn't know that. It's they really, a, you know, it's I, know. Got, it's a, I guess it's a lot of vanity involved when you're like, I don't know. I can't think of a name for my kid. I'll just use my name. <laughs> well, we could give laziness, it, we could, you know. we could help the kid develop a unique persona. And, nah, but no. nah. 
<laughs> no. Millions of options. We're just gonna go with this one. If again. he's gonna look like me, he's gonna ha- he's gonna <laughs> respond to the <laughs> yeah. same name too. Yeah. So don't do it. Just just don't. <laughs> um. Yeah. So I didn't get approved of the Bitcoin wallet. Um. And that was at Rocket Fizz, <laughs> which is like a I don't know if you have Rocket Fizz out there, which is like a no. candy company, and they sell like their own little custom line of sodas, like bacon soda. Um, uh, barbecue was it barbecue? No, buffalo. Uh, was it buffalo chicken? Chicken wings. Oh, yeah, they have buffalo wings flavored soda, which is interesting. The bacon cotton candy is pretty good. I'll vouch for that. I'll vouch for that, like Bill Weld vouched for Hillary Clinton. So, <laughs> yeah, I don't know about all that. I mean, I'm a big fan of all those foods, and I do like trying interesting. I thought it was going to be you know, terrible. To be to be honest, I thought it was going to be terrible. Yeah, well, but it was I, actually good. I'm, ima- like, I'm wow. imagining terrible. I'm like I'm, I'm, I want it to be good, but I'm imagining terrible. But you're saying it's not. No, it's, it was actually good. I was surprised. I was like, oh my god! I thought I was going to throw this out. <laughs> I just wanted it just to <laughs> try it. But yeah, and it, I could I could. And at that particular one, you can pay in Bitcoin, and you don't have to use the ATM. But if you want to buy Bitcoin or sell Bitcoin, you have to use that stupid thing. Oh. I I want to see Bitcoin ATMs in all the cannabis shops around the country. Yeah, and yeah. And, and I want it to be anonymous, and I, I want it to be a reasonable fee involved. Average Bitcoin ATM fees right now are over seven percent. Yeah. Wow. I think I think that is uh, too high. And I'm hoping that there's a, a way to get those costs down to a, at least around, a, you know, credit card transactions around three, three and so a half yes. percent. So like that. Yeah. because as a merchant, I'd like to be a merchant and offer a Bitcoin discount. Say, hey, you get five percent off anything you buy with Bitcoin. Oh, what's yeah. Bitcoin? There's the ATM over there. Yeah. That's, but that's if they're going to lose seven percent in the transaction right there, then. Nobody, nobody's really. There's no economic incentive. Uh, exactly. To, to to do that. So especially I'm, if you I'm, have to enter your credit card or your credit card information and your ID and take a picture and take your thumbprint and you none know, of that. Your, your asshole happen. print yeah. and all that. Yeah, just, no one's going to want to do all that <laughs> stuff. But you know, if it's just simple, like oh, just go. Just you have a you have a smartphone. Download this app. It's called Airbits or you know Mycelium. And then go over there, <laughs> follow the directions, and then come back over here, and, and and I'll tell you what to do from here, you know. And you can save fifteen percent, you know. You know, you're going to pay like a two percent fee for for transferring money, but it's good forever. A lot of people would want but to. But I do think that. it could. I think it could really catch on because the the dispensaries have been uh, screwed over by the banks. Yeah, completely. They're not allowed to accept credit cards, at least the the ones in Colorado. Um, so they they're short on banking services already. So mm-hmm. they they're looking for solutions, and it's only going to be a matter of time before the credit cards bring them into the fold. Now with all these extra states in, it's just a matter of time. So this window is going to close up. Yep. In about two years, we're going to start having recreational dispensaries here, uh, in, in in Nevada, because that's what but the the legislative process is about two years, right? Pretty much something like that. <laughs> yeah. California, it was like a brand new one. It was like 96, but I didn't start seeing dispensaries start popping up until after I left. Um, so there's that. Yeah. But I so mean, what well, if, uh, can you imagine, though? Can you imagine if if uh, cannabis growers, the processors, the, the packaging and manufacturing people, the retail shops and the consumers were all involved in the Bitcoin economy. Mm-hmm. Well, that would make the, the Bitcoin price jump up a little bit, and I'd be happy because my $40 in Bitcoin that I have right now, hashtag please donate, would double. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, after that, it's like, that would be great. I'm all for well, it. I don't know if it, how much it would help that, but what it would do, it would put a limit on the, the hunger uh, of the parasites or what they can mm-hmm. extract, right? They're well, so... They're so gung ho on these massive weed taxes. Even the people that are, even our, you know, quote unquote, our allies and the people that want it to be legal, some of them are out there begging for taxes. There's so many people begging for taxes. But guess what? This is sort of an end run around them. Be like, yeah, go ahead, tax away. Go ahead. Well, on what you know about, right? <laughs> yeah, but see that 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 was that was my first thought when you said that before was was 
unfortunately it went to the state and it was like okay yeah that 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 is an end run but i don't know don't you i i think that would just cause them to want to go after bitcoin even quicker because they they would have you know they're already regulating those places so horrible you know aside from the the bank stuff like just all the other regulations they put them through and i mean how many other how many places got raided even after even after their it was legalized and i think it happened at at least once in colorado and multiple times a lot a lot in a lot in California. Yeah, as I was gonna say, in Cal- I know in California it happened a bunch of times. So yeah, the threat the threat is still always there for it to happen. Unfortunately, yeah. and I think I mean, if it worked, it's great. Un- but unfortunately, I see that as them causing the causing the governments in in all these locations to actually go after Bitcoin even quicker if they try to do if they try to do that because well, just, it's I guess it's kind of there. a race though, and the whole idea mm. is to. The more people, they can only regulate the boundary of Bitcoin, where it intersects the banking system. They can lock that up tight. Mm-hmm. What what they can't do though is regulate the internal Bitcoin community. They yeah. can't. They can't. There's nothing they can do to stop the farmer and the distributor and the grower and the and the retail. Like as much of that that takes place in Bitcoin only without getting converted. That's that's where the the people that want to be protected can operate. Yeah. That's at least my true. That's what my hope is. Mm. I'd, I'd love to see it be possible, but this window, there is a, I think there is a window of opportunity that it'll, it'll close as soon as the banks start accepting these cannabis clients, which is probably any day. now. Well, I mean, Obama has been yeah, like late in his later, later term, he's been kind of yeah, yeah. having the DEA back off. That's really a lot unfortunate of it. what they did to him. That was like, hor- that was so horrible. I heard the stories that came out when that first happened. It's like, hey, here's all this money. Nope. Sorry. Yeah. We can't help you. But now, now which that story, Trump's president. Story is that? The stories about like what they did with when they, when they refused that they like, they started making these, these rules that you could, you know, they couldn't bring the money into the banks. And then they also, and then if you had a certain amount of money on, on, on the, uh, on the premises, then you'd also be, then it would also be taken from you. Yeah. So they put right. him in like this hard, these horrible catch 22s. It's like, you can't do anything. <laughs> right. And, and think it puts the, uh, it puts everyone at risk in the establishment to just yes. to maintain these, these stacks of cash all the time. Exactly. You're, you're a threat, not just to the state, but to anybody else who want, you know, just wants to take your money. So again, Bitcoin is going to be a great way. The more that's going on there, the less chance of, of having these stacks of cash that people can rip off. Yeah. So, and then there's also Bitcoin, anyway. which which is great because it's completely, or for the most part, completely like anonymous, even more so than now, Bitcoin. You know, mm-hmm. you, maybe tell me about the Bitcoin because I've just only heard it was only recently that Michael unblocked me from Facebook, <laughs> so I started. Hearing it. <laughs> so Bitcoin is based. I, I, we I, I talked about this on on one of the shows, so I'll kind of keep it quick. But it's it's based on the crypto note. I don't know if you're familiar with like Monero. It's the same kind of deal, where. Um, it's kind of using the it's using the blockchain technology and all that stuff too, uh, decentralized peer to peer, all that stuff. But what it does is rather than you know a Bitcoin transaction just going to one per one account to another and it's on a public blockchain, you can see everything. It's hidden unless you have like the private key to the person who's doing the transactions. You can't see where where that money's going or what address it's going or even the amount that is being transferred because you what you would see is like if I would if I have like fifty you know, Bitcoin, and I transferred you five, it would send out 25 in different amounts. And it wouldn't say which way it's going. So you would just see like, okay, 50 this way, 800 this way, 20 this way, five this way, and then back and then what you realize is like, sure, it may have sent out 800 Bitcoin, but you only sent five. So you got all that back. And it, it, it bounces off, and the amount of mix-ins that you do, it kind of confuses everything. Interesting. So, so there's no real so way to So the blockchain tell. records like that you spent 50 Bitcoins. No. It doesn't even public, unless you have that private key or the, the public key. Because there's, like there's like a public key, then there's like a viewing key, and then there's a private key. So unless you have like the okay, viewing so key, let me you just can't see, see I, what that transaction is. And even if you did have that, what's happening, it's only for that. What's happening? Like, okay, so let's just say you give uh 50 bit bitcoins to jeremy mm-hmm. okay it would now, send him like 200 and then it would okay, like send let's just me say you did that yeah okay, it would send me like 75 now now <laughs> you try to give the same ones to me it would now, it wouldn't work bitcoin i would check the blockchain to see if you still uh you still had that it's um, there it's just it's encrypted 
but how how do I get to how would my computer or my software or how do I how do I check to see if that's not a, already spent? It it still checks everything against a blockchain, but the blockchain is hidden. It's behind. It's it's encrypted as well with using your own. So it is recording hat. that you spent fifty. Yeah, but it's encrypted, and it still verifies the transactions. But, it, but, it ha- but it, it's not <laughs> so encrypted weird, because yeah. I have to be able to access it to find out if you already spent that or not. No, because it's all it's on the. It's on like a ledger sort of thing, but it's encrypted. Right. So and it's it, not and it only it, for you. What it, part is not encrypted? That's what I'm the, trying the to find out. The part that's not here. encrypted is okay. So if okay, so let's say the blockchain, you know, it's all encrypted. The only way that you can view what's in, what's what's uh, what's you know what account has what is if you have that viewing key, and that viewing key decrypts anything that's on that particular address, right? So if if you know I sent like okay, you so 50, I would get a viewing key. No. Like prior to Unless our I give you that viewing key, you can't see where I'm spending money. It's completely behind encryption. Where is the information that <laughs> I'm going to need to know if you've already spent that or, or not? You wouldn't be able to see it, but 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 the the Well, then how can I accept your payment? You would still it would show into your account when you got it. You would Yeah, but how do it. I how do I Somewhere, somebody it's, it's, is, fig- is checking to see if you already spent it or not, and that has to be public That would be the miners. No, no. <laughs> Crypto notes like that's where the, yeah, it's, either it's, I'm not smart enough to really understand these things. But I'm I've not as smart enough to other, understand it either. But it's it's it works. I'm it works smart enough to know I don't understand it. Yeah. I think that's <laughs> that's a good start. Cryptography yeah. is gets crazy. <laughs> it's crazy what they can do. With well, I hope it works out. And um, are you so? Uh, now, how do I exchange a Bitcoin for Bitcoin? Um, there is, what is it, Cryptopia? Is that the website? Is, uh, yes, yeah, Cryptopia. Yeah, Cryptopia. You, you've done exchange. it. I haven't done it yet, so you could probably. Yeah, I've actually, this is my first, exp- it's funny because I, I only had Bitcoin for, I had a little bit of Bitcoin for the last year or so, but I only really got into actually learning about cryptocurrencies with Bitcoin. And I, I, I have been on the exchange now because I was trying to, purchased some last week before everything went to uh hell in a handbasket with michael and i <laughs> and uh <laughs> um i but before that happened I, he actually did set me up with everything so yeah i'm on the cryptopia exchange and it just there you can you know pretty much trade and buy, buy and sell bitcoins yeah. for bitcoins or any other cur- you know any of the other currencies that are on there you can trade that you can you know you can trade for them all day long if you want including zeitcoin which is like probably the worst <laughs> one i've ever seen like the zeitgeist movements it's Crypto a, a post scarcity coin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With it, it's been yeah, it's mined to infinity. Exactly. Constantly. I was gonna say. I was gonna say. There's no. There's no limit. It, it's no also, scarcity at all here. It's also funny because it's also a proof of. Um, it's not proof of. It's not proof of work. It's the other one. Um, proof of stake, where basically you having a wallet entitles you to money. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So, <laughs> and it also shows you like pictures of like sci-fi futuristic cities. Really get you into yeah. it. Someday this will happen if you keep spending money this way. <laughs> Soon we'll have no money, but Zeitcoin will be a thing or something. We'll figure we'll figure this out once it happens, right? <laughs> we'll we'll put all the the city planning on the blockchain on <laughs> the Zeitcoin blockchain. Well, eventually, well, remember the the they're based. That's like Venus Project, right? Isn't that based on like a where a computer is going to run everything? Yeah. To, yeah so yeah, the, the 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 you know the uh, we're gonna simple version is co- commun- communism with computers. You know, that's basically like a robotic with robots, overlord yeah. strategy. <laughs> um, it's 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 been tried in at least four different classic Star Trek episodes to yeah. disaster every time. <laughs> And it's funny because even in Star Trek, they'll even talk about like, oh, I had to go to the Ferengis <laughs> and buy some <laughs> and buy some something I couldn't, you know, that was rare. <laughs> They're always having to go to the capitalist, always. So yeah, it doesn't even. Really always work. got a bad rap on Star Trek. That's for sure. Yeah. Harry Mud. Yeah. Remember when Harry Mud got pulled over by uh, the cop Captain Kirk in his p- police cruiser Enterprise? <laughs> <laughs> his police cruiser. <laughs> yeah, they're like his, his, his inspections inspire expired. Pull him over! I swear, like it, the oh. episode with Harry Mud starts that way. Wow, I did not see that one. <laughs> I've I've been kind of off of my Star Trek because uh, I don't watch Star Trek. That's right, yeah, never mind. Um, <laughs> not clowning it. The movies are the movies are awesome. I will say that the every other every other movie is good. 
Star Trek. The odd ones, right? No, the even saw, ones. Yeah. The even ones. Yeah, the first one was kind of the one with slow the whales. and boring. Like, the con was great. Was the, with... the third one was terrible. The the fourth one was the one with the whales. That oh, okay. where they that's go the back. One and... I think I've actually saw all the way through. That's the one where they go back to the twentieth first century, and they're like, "You're still yeah. using chemotherapy? <laughs> 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 how medieval?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that one was fun. Well, how about the reboots though? At least the reboots are look better. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're they're a lot more fun, but. But the problem with them is, is that they don't sit there and talk about intergalactic diplomacy for eight hours. <laughs> so, like, every, all the Star Trek fans hate it. <laughs> uh, you win some, you, lose some you, know? you gain a, gain a whole new fan base. Yeah, there was like an Onion article that was like talking about how how upset they were that they didn't spend like ten hours talking about the bureaucracy of the of the Federation <laughs> for, for eight hours, but instead all they got was a fun action film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no no communist rhetoric from Mr. Spock, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's what was what is the line you used to say all the time like, you know, uh sacrifice the needs of the many yeah. outweigh the needs of the one. Yeah, but <laughs> in one of those movies, the con was it, right? Where he died? Where Spock died was that was con, right? That was the second one. Didn't he end up like go, kind of like going back on that anyway in the end? So well, right. They always do when their own interests are at stake, yeah. right? Like the commies are all about the group when they're talking about your obligation. <laughs> well, exactly, because they're always talking about your obligation. They're right. never talking about their own. Exactly. <laughs> so if, if that ever comes up, suddenly they're going to reevaluate principles on the spot. Yeah, it's like that cartoon I saw where you just see like the little ANCAP or the the ANCOM ball, and it's like you see like another one go up to him and say, "Hey, your your uh, your great uncle just inherited you a million uh, eight hundred million dollars," and you see like it turn from from red to yellow. Yeah, over the panels. Yeah, it just slowly changes the yellow. Brilliant. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what was the other thing? Oh, we talked about the app, right? Yeah, I got an app. We did Dear yep. Babby. Was there anything else? What's going on in What's going on in Dogland? <laughs> what's going on oh, with the murder well, dogs? So because we need a murder hot- dog update now that you're not now that you've been dewormed. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, can, tell us why you've been dewormed, because I still don't oh. know why I was why I was <laughs> yeah. dewormed, and I maybe if if I find out why you were dewormed, that'll give me a clue. Well, yeah, I well. Michael and I had a very, you know, tense relationship. <laughs> we, you didn't we wait got, a minute. You didn't you criticize his audio. band's demo tape, did you? No, 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 nothing <laughs> okay. like that. Nothing yeah, like don't that. make that mistake like I did. No, we we've gotten into some arguments. You know, there was Audio Gate over the summer at Pork Fest <laughs> where I took a beating for two weeks straight over a mistake that mostly wasn't even mine i'm just the only one who took the who stood up and took responsibility which by the way made <laughs> for did, like two great for episodes audio of, Fiend Fiend Fiend, uh, of freedom fiends by the way that was like my what, favorite episodes oh yeah was like berating you for bad audio oh yeah we yeah he pretty much just lambasted me for a couple of weeks and i took it and i i i i, I shot back at him as often as i could yeah and we ended up okay after that but it was always like you know he was he was always stressed with me because I had different freaky audio issues because my house is like haunted. Apparently, I don't know. He, he's even the one who said it. Like at one point, he's like, "It's just voodoo. I can't explain why we can't figure things out over it's there." It's just you. It works great for everybody else, Jeremy. Uh, apparently, it's just so, you. I guess so. But whatever it was, we were we weren't even working on a show thing. We were working on Bitcoin because <laughs> he he wanted to show me. He he offered to show me how to exchange Bitcoin for Bitcoin. And then asked me if I could sell him some Bitcoin. So we were working on that. And and you had bad audio talking. while you were doing it, right? <laughs> yes. And he, well, we, were, we, were, we were in the process of fixing that. And then it, and then Jim hopped on feed phone with us. And then it just got uglier. And then, yeah. Oh, blame it on I, me, I, right? No, 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 no. Just the, no, just the fact that once you came on, he was just he was even more mad at me. <laughs> and it just didn't go very well and then he had, he said he was going to fire me if i if i if i asked any more questions and what i said did you really just say like i asked a question without even meaning to like did you really just say, did you really just say that i can never ask you another question and he goes that's it you're fired i'm like 
All oh, right. shit. I didn't ask you a question. <laughs> Damn it. It's like well, one of those, thought, like, can um, I ask you a question? You already did. But no. He did, he did. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, it, that's pretty much what it was. So, but I mean, I, you know, I, I saw it coming and it's fine because we did. We, we, we never, we didn't actually talk. We emailed afterwards and he apologized and I apologized for some things and. I'm still, so I'm still was, not so, a fiend. So basically, but... you asked you asked too many questions. You know, Socrates got into no. I had, I had, I had, I had, yeah, I had too many problems, and it, I was the only fiend that caused his blood pressure to raise. Regularly. Socrates asked too many questions. Eventually, they made him drink poison. Yeah. So, so <laughs> I guess I got a flight. Easy. <laughs> you got off easy. No, but like I said, we've 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 actually you know made the peace for the most part <laughs> until now. <laughs> No, that's, oh, I'm. That's I know. Fine, I know what the show image is now. It's gonna be. It's gonna be Socrates and Jerry <laughs> 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 drinking the drinking the chalice with poison in it. <laughs> oh, well, so much for reaching out to him after the new year. <laughs> well, <laughs> this I, I, I out. was pleased to hear from him recently when he asked me if if well, I would be willing to come back on the fiends, and I was like. You know, we were guess, all excited about that. Yeah, <laughs> he and told he us we were all excited. announcing that I was coming back, and then he's like, "Oh hell no, no way." So I don't know, no idea what was. Well, I think he anyway. did it. We did a show with uh, Miller Miller. Was it Monday? Monday night, Tuesday morning. So check that one uh, with Steve Miller and Steve Miller Miller <clears throat> dropped the bomb, <laughs> laid down the gauntlet. <laughs> and he was like, "I love Steve uh, Jim Bab, but he's a, and I know him in real life for friends in real life, but he he does get annoying." So there you go. Have some real life beef. Enjoy. <laughs> First it was pod beef. Uh, that might and get then out <laughs> See, you know, that's funny. Michael actually told me to listen to that episode so I could hear how, how, how Jim talked about, about how Steve talked about his friend Jim so I could get some perspective on how I should feel. <laughs> Wait a minute. What? What? <laughs> So yeah, that's probably going to answer so. both of your questions. So, <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah, I I don't know what happened with that. I like like I said, he told us that, and then I I think I think because he got mad at me, I think it just I think he was emailing with you at the time that he got mad at me, so it just caused him to get extra mad at, at both of us. Yeah. I'm sure, because it brought up you know old feelings of him being frustrated with you, I guess, and then obviously being from what I understand, me, so. from what I understand. Uh, what he was telling me was that while he was really like sick and like one of those days where he was really like upset or whatever uh, because of his health, it was like you and it was, it was Bab and, and I like both were kind of disagreeing with him and it was upsetting to him. And he, he kind of interpreted it as like abuse, but, but what I did was just like, I saw that he was like really upset by it and I was like, okay, I'm sorry, whatever, you know, I'm not going to argue with it. Because it was basically like I was trying to correct him because he said something wrong. And I was like, that's not what I said. You're kind of taking me out of context. And he was kind of interpreting it like, like, F you for taking me out of context. And I was like, that's not what it was about. You know, I just like, I just don't like it when you go on the air and say, I said something and I, it's not what I said. And it kind of makes me look bad. But I, anyway, at the end, I was just like, yeah, whatever. I, I'm going to drop it. You know, it's it's not a big deal. And, you know, I'm sorry if I came off that way. But you were, I get, according to him, you were upset that that they weren't going to bring the LRN banner uh, to Porkfest and put it behind the fiends while they were talking as like kind of a protest. I wasn't upset about it. I just I wasn't going to do the sh- do do the show um, while LRN is banned from the room. Yeah. Um, and, but what he was saying, but what he was saying was like he didn't want to risk like the fiends not being able to get free tickets. And you yeah, were and, upset. And that's why I didn't involve yeah. anybody else in my decision. Okay. Okay. So I think that's what he was I just interpreting. Said, I'm not at. doing it. I and didn't he, care what anybody else did. Yeah. He, he interpreted it as a. I'm just, I'm just telling you what he told me. Like, I'm not, yeah, <laughs> I'm not whatever. taking sides. Like, uh, I think you guys uh, are both like. It's unfortunate yeah. that, that he would be, you know, would feel that way, but uh, whatever. Yeah. I'm, I'm not the kind of person that is good about hiding my feelings. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, me do we just me either, which is. <laughs> I have a tendency to just blurt out things yeah. that are true. <laughs> I do the same thing, and I've gotten he's gotten me in trouble with Michael before. So you know. Well, well, it's funny because what you, what you said, Jim, is actually what I recognized after the fact, and then when him and I, 
emailed back and forth. That's you know, I kind of yeah. said as I I I, re- I, there, I reached a point where I did recognize that it was like his health was getting in the way, and instead of yeah. instead of doing what you did and just saying I don't need to be right right now, just you know, just let it go. Yeah, because I kept cause, pushing, cause all I kept pushing health, forward because I'm like I didn't do anything wrong here, and it just yeah, because his bad. health issues really do kind of like oh, really no, take I, a I, toll I, I, on I, him. I don't, yeah, yeah. Oh no, I I I I and I I I recognize that. Yeah. I told him as much because you know he kept he kept. He wanted to make sure I didn't think he was, you know, being a. I think he's. He repeatedly said, "I don't want you to think of like being a pussy." By, <laughs> by, take, by not by not by by mentioning my health, I'm like, I no, I've known you long enough yeah. now that I I know your health situation. I'm not going. I don't. I've yeah, never he almost mocked died. Your health situation. Yeah, I like. Yeah. I've never <laughs> mocked. Your health I situation. have mocked his health situation well, because <laughs> as but it's as, fun because he does as well. I yeah. didn't. I, you know, and it's something we talked about. It's like, hey, if I I feel it's kind of like if the. Um, if the prosecution brings up something, then the defense can also <laughs> reference yeah. it, you know? So <laughs> I feel like if, you know, whatever he would bring up on the show is fair game to make jokes about. So yeah. it's kind of like the Amy all. Schumer thing where she, she sits there and calls herself like as a joke, ha ha, I'm a slut. Ha ha. And then when someone like says like, yeah, you're a slut, then they get like offended. Cause it's not them saying it anymore. You know, it's like, <laughs> then it's, they, they interpret it differently. It's like, are you really, making a joke here or are you like really insulting me? I can't tell. And I can see it at that point, especially when, you know, you have dealing with all those health issues and you know, your life's well, in question I think there's every a way day to, to you know, make jokes about yeah. different topics that are, that are done in a, in a non mean spirited way. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's not like a joke has to be an insult or an attack. It's just, Right, it's right. just. I uh, make fun of him because yeah. he's old. You know, I I make old jokes about him. Like, what was it? I don't know. I don't know what a VCR is grandpa. Like I do that to him all the time. But you know, some people get offended. But by you that. know, I guess you know, in hindsight, it might be considered uh, provocative to say, you know, like you know, get back to me when your oxygen level is higher. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I can see why you could take that well, the wrong way. Well, yeah. Well, I was gonna say, unfortunately, that's the thing. It depends on the mood. You yeah. know, If he's already in a good mood, like he'll laugh. If yeah, he was not, not in a good mood that day. I think something was going on that or day with his health. Or, or, because what I was basically oh. saying was, look, like you went on the air and you said something that I didn't say, or you misinterpreted something I said, and then you were like saying that, and it does make me look bad when you put it that way. And I was like, can you like just correct it on the next show? Like just to do it. I was wrong. Jim never said that. What he said was this, and that was it. But he was interpreting it as like an attack. Like I was saying, like you're, you know, you're lying about me on the air, and I was like, that was not my point. And I could see how he would, he could interpret that, that like uncharitably. Like if he wasn't, which which he was, like he was inter- interpreting it uncharitably because he probably, you know, had a bad day or something. And I was just like, look, it's it's not really that important. Whatever. Next time I'm on, I'll just I'll just say like I I didn't say that, but you know, I don't I just want to correct the record. But mm, whatever. Michael's Michael's cool in my book, I like and, and mine as well. I've, yeah. I've yeah. really never said anything bad about him. Um, yeah. Certainly, never said anything behind his back. I I wouldn't tell him in a in a in a loving way to his face. No, so, um, <laughs> and I, I mean yeah. that sincerely. Same with me. <laughs> I I you know I enjoyed every single uh, Fiend show I ever did. All the hosts, I just you know they're the best. So. Uh, I'll be happy to come back if if I'm ever needed, and you know if not, that's fine. But if needed, I would be be happy to serve again. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Someday, hopefully, maybe his health will get better. He'll be a lot less stressed, and he'll be like, you know what? I could deal with your guys' crap. Come on back. <laughs> well, that, that, well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that, it, would, it would. No, no. It, that that might that would probably would have been a take because that's yeah. pretty much how he left it with me. It's, yeah. You know, and he's and he did he did mention he mentioned he his mentioned blood Babs, pressure. Yeah. Happy too. You know, he's like that's pretty much you know it's a health thing. So if I could deal with the possible stress that I think the two you know the two of you might cause, <laughs> then it's one thing. But if I I can't, then it's not worth it. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I understand that. You know, like I, I said, for like the life of said. me, though, I don't understand how you and me could cause stress as I, some of his I, like biggest supporters and allies out there. How, how if we're the ones stressing you out? Gosh, what about your what are your enemies doing to you? Jeez. <laughs> 
Well, he he blocks his enemies. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, that any, every, appara- yeah, apparently yeah. it's well. No, he said that too. That it hurts. You know, obviously it hurts more if if some if and even if it's not like you said, Jim, if he perceives it, if yeah. you know, just like with anybody, if you pers- to, regardless of what you yourself are doing, if somebody else perceives it a, a, a different way and you don't actually get to talk to them about it before the emotions start running higher and higher. You know, <laughs> mis- miscommunication happens all the time yeah. that way. And so, well, and that's why I cut all of my friends a lot of slack all the time. And I, I've just, you know, <laughs> I, at least I try to, you know, so, and uh, I guess the friends that stick with me, uh, cut me some slack and I cut them some slack and it works out. Yeah. We love Michael, but yeah. I do. Yeah. <laughs> what are you going to do? Okay. <laughs> So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so many, you know, there's been so many fallen celebritarians that lately. It's in just yeah. incredible. Like they're just, they're uh, they're dropping like flies. Um, Maybe it's for the better, though. To to mu- there's a lot more mundane libertarians than there used to be. Yeah, because <laughs> honestly, that's a bad thing though. Yeah, because you know what, like the 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 typical or the, no, it's, it's not typical anymore, but. The ANCAP bloggers who have like what eight hundred subscribers on YouTube, I find more valuable than the ones with like a half a million, <laughs> you know, people because they're all kind of doing the same thing. Like, hey, let's talk about the nap for eight hours, over and over and over. Let's, let's do this, or hey, let's be a little bit edgy and talk. Or they'll do the uh, let's talk about feminism and SJWs ad nauseum. You know, like every single SJW video that pops up, we're gonna do like an hour long re- rebuttal to. It's like really. <laughs> I'm well, so that is tired some pretty of this. funny material. I mean, it's it's yeah. hard to But resist. it gets so old. It, like like I used to think it was hilarious, but now I'm just like my f- subscription feed is packed full of that stuff. And it's like <laughs> interesting. Okay. It's all it's all that well, now. Because most of their videos are pretty much the same, so anything that anybody making fun of their videos is going to end up making the same thing over and over. And Come over on, again. Trigly Puff! Like, how do you beat Trigly well, Puff? Tri- no, that was yeah, an exception. To- that was amazing. Yeah, I was going to say that's like you know, every <laughs> once in a while you have those yeah. those rare diamonds. You know, <laughs> that's what I want. I just want I want the top tier. Like, I yeah. don't I don't want to waste my time with the. With the mildly annoying, I want. The, yeah, I like that really one. Funny. I like the uh, the cut Carl and the eight Skrillex. Like that was great. Those ones were great. That's the you know. You're a Which fucking, one was that? You're a fucking white yeah. male. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. <The> classic. <laughs> are you classic. kidding me? You know that those guys. Yeah. <laughs> like those ones are great. Oh. Trigglypuff was. Yeah, great. I learned about that one just from the from the expression, and then I later <laughs> found the original source. <laughs> like, like just so many people were imitating it. You didn't even need to know about the original. Yeah. About there, I saw one recently that had uh, it was like a performance art of a person opening a can of SpaghettiOs, struggling with the can opener for about five minutes to <laughs> to a, like a standing ovation of her peers. Is this real this life? One? No. See that stuff. I, that stuff I I get I I have fun with, but I also have fun with the alt right cringe compilation as well, because I see them kind of like you know different sides of the same coin. The alt right and and the social justice warriors who just kind of had like different views on politics. That's what it is. At the end of the day, they still behave the same way, right? They really deserve each other. What yeah, we should do, do is be able to somehow put them together and let them fight amongst themselves, so we can exactly. go about our business. Let, let, let's let California secede and give it give it to them, <laughs> all of them. <laughs> let them fight California. <laughs> I'm all for that. Yeah, but I mean, just it's just it's. But it's always just SJWs, SJWs. And that's why I usually kind of go after the alt-right more. It's not because I see them more of, of a threat. I don't. I just th- see them more of kind of un- like un- not really un- unchallenged. Yeah, it's, it's almost like they're, they're less challenged. Well, now they're starting to – now now with this Richard Spencer thing going around, um, they're getting a little bit more negative attention, which is good. But I've been doing that before it was on anybody's radar. Right, I've been talking about the alt right before anybody. You know, I I was <laughs> I was doing it before it was cool. Hipster Jim, yeah. <laughs> well, what was like that? Wasn't there something with like a Nazi salute or something? Yeah. Like I don't even know what that was. Is that well, anything serious? Or are these still people just fringe, fringe? They fringe are fringe that get all the attention. Well, they're fringe, well, but the thing is, is like you have people like Milo Yiannopoulos and. Um, 
Steve Bannon, who is Trump's senior campaign advisor, and then who else? Lauren Southern. Like these people, like will get up and say, like I'm, we're part of the alt right. We're part of the alt right, but they're not. They're part of the alt right just as much as like Glenn Beck or Bill Maher is libertarian. And I've used that analogy. You know, there's lots of people who call themselves libertarian who aren't. Gary Johnson, I th- I Bill Well. I'm going to just avoid the term alt right because already yeah, that's a, that's it has no idea. meaning at all. Yeah. Well, that yeah, that's conservative. But or, no, but it does well, have a meaning. And if you go back and what? you look at like the people who originated the term, like the right stuff, alternative hypothesis, you know, the ex dark enlightenment people, they're all talking about how the alt right is 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 an umbrella term for all of these white nationalist ideologies uh, from libertarians all the way to, to, to fascism, but kind of stopping at white supremacy. Like they, they're not white supremacists. They don't view white people well, as superior. No, I, well, one of the guides uh, I read sort of this, they want to be yeah, separate, like but the, equal. the normies guide to the alt, right. <laughs> but it listed, what were they called? Like the, the 1488 ers or something yeah. where they're like the yes. worst, like real hardcore Nazi white supremacists, the worst yeah. of the worst that the rest they said well the rest of the alt right would rather these people go away but yeah. they're sort of still in there yeah there's part there's, of there's bleed over but for the most part like the national socialist movements like the neo nazis a lot of them don't like the alt right cuz and they don't like Donald Trump as well because Donald Trump is very pro israel he insisted that his wife get married to a, a jewish man uh circumcise their kid like and they they're really upset by that like he's extremely pro Israel, <laughs> and a lot of the alt right are extremely pro Israel too. So like they they don't like them in that respect. And there's like this YouTuber called like Goyim Goddess, and she makes like these alt right cringe compilations. But I, I I subscribe to her thinking like okay this is gonna be like some alt writer who or doesn't like the alt right, but no, it turns out she's like crazy <laughs> like flat Earth uh, oh, <laughs> neo Nazi wow. yeah like just horrible person, but. The alt right cringe compilation was hilarious. <laughs> but if you if you if people start throwing around this term alt right, like if I heard it in let's just say casual conversation, not on Facebook, but amongst just like regular people, I wouldn't know what they meant. I yeah. wouldn't know if they're talking about uh, Milo or if they're talking about well, neo Nazis. And they probably would have their own idea, and somebody else would have a different idea. It's like what's now. Well, well, that's you know. the thing, because it, it like like Jim was saying, it does have like it, there is an actual meaning to it, but it's quickly become this. Um, most other people just assume it is, it's this umbrella term because so many other people use it, yeah, or it gets placed on so many other people. Like there was this this one clip I saw the other day it was who was it? Uh, ben Swan put something out that you know because supposedly according to I guess it, I think the only source he had was the Southern Poverty Law, Law Center, which yeah. I'm very disappointed in. Him that he used that <laughs> Come on, Ben, you, you're better but, than this. <laughs> But but apparently, like at least them and anybody who actually takes them seriously, which sadly there are people that take that, that place seriously, uh, 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 anarcho-capitalists are considered on the alt right. Cons- well, uh, and to, to some I people, I've been looking for that video, but I wouldn't be surprised if Ben Swan yeah. was reporting, like, and this is if he might say something like, you know, and this is what Southern Poverty Law Center is saying. He didn't say no. I watched that video. He didn't say that. Oh, was, he didn't right. mention it. Someone that just men- apparently was his source for it. Someone was saying uh, that it was like, kind of taken like, out of context that he was saying that there's part of the alt right who are anarcho capitalists, but not, you know, but no, no, he wasn't saying no, no, he wasn't saying all of them. He, he yeah, was, yeah. he was, the way he explained it was that it's not just the little alt right of these white nationalists led by the what's the Spencer is that yeah. the guy's name, uh, uh, and who's like I guess one of the leaders right or the leader of it. Mm-hmm. And or isn't he also the one that's with credited with being co- uh, credited with coining the term? I think in 2008. I think that's what no. I read, I've I've least. heard. I thought it was him. Wait, who? Oh, Richard Spencer, probably. Yeah, because I know the right yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Biz have been saying it for a long time. Uh, there was people coming out of the NRX movement, which is the neo reactionaries. They they started adopting the term too. Um, yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. Like, but according with the way Ben Ben Swan presented it was that. It's actually more this umbrella term that includes all these other groups that yeah. can also be, which an anarcho capitalist was in there. But again, like I said, the only source for that was the Southern Poverty Law Center. Yeah. Like, okay. So those, so those, so those crack uh, jobs are are less than it. So that just means that you know that's the new terrorist, which, yeah. which well, is consistent. You know what? I bet you, I bet you Ben will will if he made a mistake there, he will he would correct it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's an I mean, outstanding guy. Yeah, I like Ben. I hope so. to fix that. Normally, yeah, he's been great about a lot of stuff, actually. <laughs> Except 9-11. <laughs> <laughs>
He does follow that. He does. He does yeah. keep going back to that well every, not so, well, pretty often actually. Yeah. <laughs> Other than yeah. that, he's great. Otherwise, good stuff. <laughs> it's like why are we still talking about this? Like Fifteen years later, nothing's coming of it, even if it was true. I know, and as I try to tell people, I mean, I know it's like, a, you know, it may be an emotional argument, but like, I lost somebody that day, all right? My cousin was in the building. Oh, I've gotten sorry, over man. it. I think you need to, too. Yeah. All right? So, like, yeah. you know, it's like, because I've always said, you know, what, so what? What if you find out something else? Does it really change anything? Yeah. No, government's still horrible either way. <laughs> <laughs> and as much as I don't like Molyneux, like he did give like a good like analogy about the 9-11 stuff. It's like, why would you if you have someone who who killed like like 500 people and he had a signed confession saying that he killed those 500 people and you have like video evidence and you know forensic evidence and you have the thumb the bloody thumbprint and you have all this evidence that like you have a solid case, you know. There's there's no way that any juror would would look at all this evidence and say like okay there you know there's a reasonable doubt you know there, it's beyond a reasonable doubt but instead of using all that information you're going to try to prove you're going to try to have him be thrown in jail because you know he was like the second gunman <laughs> on the on the grassy knoll and you're going to pull all this kind of weird like look at this like where's that little splotchy thing on this picture is that him you know like that's what you're going to go with <laughs> it's like that's what you're doing with the 911 stuff it's like you have all this they they had fully admit like oh yeah <laughs> we went into Iraq and it was all crap and uh, all of our reasons for it were crap and we killed like I don't know like half a million citizens and you know all these all of our soldiers that died over there you know killing all those people like there's a good good million people that we've killed over the last decade and yeah no big deal but you're gonna worry about like the three thousand that died in the World Trade Center because look at this spot right here it looks like there's molten steel coming out of the corner it's like come on man was that what we're going with? <laughs> <laughs> on that and uh, yeah but you know i guess it is um but let's face it though we're talking about a a a shocking event in in contemporary america yeah like just uh, horrific not in terms of the number of bodies but in terms of the production and the horror and the reaction and everything about it was so huge yeah and then you have this information vacuum it's of course people are going to go wild tr filling in that vacuum yeah and it's just i i'd love to know but i i realized long ago i i'll never have any idea the the level exactly which people to blame um, oh yeah all the whatever's whatever 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 documents are classified now will stay that way for at least 75 years or i'm so. saying there's a chance that dick cheney Flew it by remote control right into the tower. I'm, I'm With CGI gonna, I, hologram planes. I'm leaving that out there as a possible theory. <laughs> but that 28 pages was kind of uh, enlightening. But we all, all kind of knew that Saudis were behind it somehow. Uh, but the 28 pages kind of proved that, you know, there might be something going on. And they did invest. They, they willfully did not investigate a Saudi connection. And that, that was really shocking for a lot of people like we we kind of knew because <laughs> like, they're all from saudi arabia like all of those hijackers most yeah, of them I are know. from saudi <laughs> and she's and gosh and they're all they're all giving these big checks to the clinton foundation <laughs> what's going on here yeah but uh, but i think trump said uh he i think he mentioned it to alex jones maybe he was pandering but he was going to talk about like looking into all that stuff and possibly having another investigation which which, which, oh, sure. which i'm not no against doubt. like i'm not against yeah you know, but I think I think in the end it's going to be a giant waste of money and time. Um, yeah, because they're not, they're not going to come out and say, "Yep, it was holograms." <laughs> you know, <laughs> it was space beams all along. You're right, Judy. Well, you know, there's so much weird stuff. The one out in Pennsylvania, I think, is also weird, and it was the one where they the crash site was was um, was forbidden, and it was a quick cleanup, and there was very few very little evidence of what happened to this plane well, well it's and going I wouldn't be like surprised if they had miles shot that plane down with a missile because it was headed for like the capital or something yeah i wouldn't be surprised but i mean like in but the end just, it's... they're just afraid of of knowing that yeah well we had to protect our own offices yeah. you know yeah it's like well, yeah. We, if we, that did come out, I would not. I would not be like, "Ooh, ooh, this is this is proof the government's lying to us." <laughs> like, I wouldn't be doing that. I'd just like, well, that's the yeah, well, that's the whole thing. Like, I think yeah, that would be like a fairly <laughs> rational response to like being attacked and preventing. You know, like, hey, what what are you going to choose? Like, a hundred people dying or possibly go crashing into another building? 
you know. Right, but you could see why they would still want to make up a story about these heroics yeah. on board, and they went down fighting, and and America because, because America, you know. yeah, America. <laughs> like if that did come out, it'd be kind of interesting. And I want to know like some of the family members who released audio tapes of their family calling and stuff. And, and the the Pentagon thing, very mysterious. I yeah. don't know what the you know. Why would you attack yourself? <laughs> Yeah, but, but you know, because because it was those people, they yeah. <laughs> there was every. Let's face it, you've been at a job where there's like people nobody wanted to work with, right? <laughs> like, and they, hey, they can you go get, get me a donut? A it's wing or a floor, <laughs> yeah. or a department. We're moving all the donuts to the west wing of the building. Everybody who wants donuts, go over there, and they're like, don't get donuts tomorrow, okay? <laughs> you know, that asshole from de- uh, from county. <laughs> We're, we're getting rid of them finally. <laughs> yeah. At least it was a legitimate military target. That's what <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I guess that wasn't even the attended target. I think. I think they that was just kind of like a, a quick, kind of like improv thing at the end. I think what they were really going for was like the White House or something like that. I think that's what they were saying. I don't remember. It's been so long since I looked into it. I've, I've kind of like retired from arguing with truthers because I'm just. I, well, yeah, it's so it's old a, and boring. It's the same things over and over again, and they use the same stuff over and over again. Like, there's a couple free fall, of dude, free fall. Yeah, free there's fall. a couple of like truthers. Um, uh, was it uh, he, like I can't remember his name. Um, he, two popular YouTubers who are like big 911 truthers who have like come out and said like they can't stand the typical like you know like jet fuel doesn't melt steel beams and you know like they attacked at this and they were like it's. Like no, like it's it's a lot more subtle than that. All this nine eleven stuff that Alex Jones pushes is all tr- trash, and we believed it. But you know what were we thinking? <laughs> like even they're kind of like <laughs> even a lot of them are kind of backing out of it now. So I mean, I don't know. I think it's a giant waste of time. You know why? Exactly. When you can just say like, look at look at the Iraq War. Forget the reasons why I went into the Iraq War. You know, look at all these people that died, and for what? Nothing. There was no no weapons of mass destruction there. There was no terrorists there. It was just crap. If anything, we just handed Remember him joking about over. it at the White House dinner. Gee, no weapons of mass destruction under yeah. here. <laughs> Maybe they're over there. And all those uh, elites at the at Versailles are like, oh, he's so witty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Making jokes about that. A million people are dead and he's cracking jokes. Well, yeah, but that's just how brazen they got. I mean, that's the same thing like all the stuff that Hil- all the tapes of, of Hillary laughing at different stuff. And yeah. They, they just don't... They, they're just so you, they're getting more bra- more brazen. They don't oh, care. Did you see? I I don't see these like White House press uh, s- spokesmen. I hardly ever see these. But I came across one where some guy, I guess representing the White House, the chief of chief of staff or whatever, was being um, questioned about the the. They said uh, Russia had bombed uh, five hospitals and a clinic. Did you hear this one? No. He's telling reporters how Russians bombed these five hospitals and a clinic in Syria. And the reporter's like, well, where were they? Which ones were they? Oh, I, 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 I don't have that. Uh, okay, well, how do we know this? You know, what do we have? You know, this guy was mumbling, uh, was stuttering, and 100% of his body language says, I am a lying scumbag, and I really haven't even prepared my <laughs> lies for this Whoa. press conference. It was to me so transparent and obvious that the guy was full of crap throwing out these wild accusations i'm thinking like oh yeah aluminum tubes and tracks <laughs> uh yeah they're yeah and then they dump the babies out of the incubators and, <laughs> and i just thought about all of the lies and all of the crap that they've they've used over and over again to to, to get support for their wars can't they it's do a crap. better no. job nope. like really <laughs> like, nope they can't do a better they've job. had enough practice uh, well, well, no, well. Unfortunately, the, in general, they have, but those that position changes quite often. So <laughs> you're bound to have the new guy come, you know, because they don't even last a full term, do they? The pre- those those like press secretaries and stuff, like all the people, the spokespeople, <laughs> don't they change out regularly? It, it well, it must just be just destroy your soul. Well, so I'm, yeah, it's like a high beyond high stress job. It's like you can only take that type of uh, abuse. Stand there and lie, and you better be convincing, or you're fired. Okay. Yeah, no pressure. <laughs> no pressure. Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> and and let's face it, the White House press corps 
hardly a, a tough, challenging audience, right? I mean, mm-hmm. they're all hand selected for 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 complicity. It's very rare to get one of them in there that's going to ask an actual decent question. Maybe well, yeah, that's well, why they're not prepared for it when it happens. Well, well yeah, well, because usually you get one shot at stuff like that. Uh, you know, the because the, most people I, I know, like people like in, independent journalists who have gotten in there, you know, usually get one shot. And if, if you're good and you don't say anything or you just ask a very mundane question, you may get invited back the next time. Otherwise, you know, you ask the question like that, you just don't get invited back ever again. Yeah. So that's how they control, you know, they'll give you a shot but you have to be good. <laughs> like that guy, that guy, even if it's somebody who's been there for a while, will probably not be invited back the next couple times around. <laughs> well, um, who was that? Who's that older lady? She's pretty old. Looks like she's been there since like the Jackson administration. Um, she, she asked some fairly tough questions every once in a while. I can't remember. She got into a little bit of a, of a, uh, argument. Do you remember who I'm talking about? She's like 92. I don't watch enough of them to know it. To mm. really know it. She's of been them. around for like every presidency of our life. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Then like towards the end, she started complaining about then, the Jews. Yeah. <laughs> she's like, the Jews. I, I think she's she like grandfathered yeah. in. They're yeah. like, all right, don't worry. <laughs> but she used to give like crap to all the presidents, and like it was like a joking thing every time they came in. She's like, oh, she's here again. <laughs> yeah, I remember her. I just don't remember her name. Yeah. Yeah. Well. All right. Um, so you guys took up the hemlock, hemlock or take up that thy hemlock and uh, die, right? Is that the name of the show? <laughs> yes. <laughs> right on top of that, Rose. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to start uh, preparing everything for work tonight. So, anyways, thanks for doing the show today. <laughs> so is there anything you wanted to plug? <laughs> Do it now. Hey, uh, free Rossathon. Oh, yes. Coming free up Ross. December 4th. Big deal. Check it out. Go to freeross.com or I mean freeross.org and check it out or freerossathon.com. It's going to be eight hours of programming. Uh, Lynn and Tatiana and Terry Clark are all coming uh, to Pennsylvania. We've got a, a studio set up here that's kind of going to be the kind of the headquarters. And then there's literally eight hours of material coming in from awesome presenters from all over the world. So it's going to be cool. December 4th. Awesome. And Jeremy, you want to plug your podcast, your your little oh, yeah. show, as as Nick would yeah, say. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I do a little I do a I do another little show like Nick. <laughs> it's, uh, the Seeds of Liberty. It's uh, all, all all of our stuff can be found at the Seeds of Liberty dot com. Yeah. And you're the uh, seeds, I'm the stems. And I'm, and I'm Together the we're the seeds and stems of liberty. <laughs> of Lulberty. Perfect. Lulberty. <laughs> Lulberty. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Uh, was there anything else? I think. Yeah, no. Hashtag please donate. Hashtag please donate. No special. Uh, no after show this time. So, no. <laughs> but you still get money anyway. You get bonus shows. So, all right, guys. Uh, not going to say worms. Damn, fuck. All right. <laughs>dealing with governments wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes tired of having to listen to your parole officer never again with the bipcot no guff human license wristband this wristband has a no guff patented no guff hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail it's like they can't even see you the best part is it actually works it doesn't actually work it's so easy to use just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them and by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known to the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at Lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? 
take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, the, in this country, and in a bunch of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try Fiend Phone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve Fiend Phone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. Fiend Phone. I never knew remote audio could be this good.